Praise God. How's everybody tonight? Blessed. You must be blessed, highly flavored, prosperous, anointed, and everything. How many of y'all love the presence of God? Amen. Oh, yes. That's why he's called the Most High, right? Glory, glory, glory. 1 Samuel 15. Training for reigning. Everyone say, I'm being trained up. I'm being trained up. We don't do Bible studies. We do training sessions out of the living word. In 1 Samuel chapter 15. Glory to God. <clears throat> Is everybody there? In verse 17. Is everybody there? Amen. So Samuel said to Saul, when you were little in your own eyes, in other words, when you were humble, Amen. Were, you, uh, were you not head of the tribes of Israel? And did not the Lord anoint you king over Israel? Now the Lord sent you on a mission. Everyone say mission. mission. How many of y'all know you're on a mission? Amen. Amen. How many of you want to complete the mission? You better. Now the Lord sent you on a mission and said, go and utterly destroy the sinners. Thank God he doesn't do that today. The Amalekites. And fight against them until they are consumed. Of course, we know that this was the race of the Nephilim. Amen. Amen. Why then you, did you not obey the voice of the Lord? Why did you swoop down on the spoil and do evil in sight of the Lord? And Saul said to Samuel, but, eh, you knew he was out of order. He became the but, not the head. And Saul said to Samuel, but I have obeyed the voice of the Lord and gone on the mission on which the Lord sent me and brought back Agog, king of Amalek. I have utterly destroyed the Amalekites. But the people took of the plunder, sheep and oxen, the best. They took the best of the things which should have been utterly destroyed. So he even admitted that he was disobedient. To sacrifice to the Lord your God. Now, here's something very powerful. He said, listen, we took the best of everything even though they were supposed to be destroyed. But I made a choice to disobey what you told me to do and took the best of everything so that we could take this good stuff out of carnal reasoning and then we can sacrifice it to your God. That was the mistake he just made. He didn't say, my God. He said, your God. So I want you to understand something. It was impossible for this man to truly follow the Lord all the way because he had drifted from the area of him being his God. Now he was just Samuel's God. Again, but the people took of the plunder and sheep and oxen and the best of the things which should have been utterly destroyed to sacrifice to the Lord your God in Gilgal. This is how the enemy plays with people. So Samuel said, Has the Lord his great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? In other words, is it really the burnt offering and the sacrifice that is so important that you took the best of the sheep when I told you what to do? And to heed than the fat of the rams? For rebellion is the same sin as what witchcraft. And stubbornness as an iniquity and idolatry. Man, he just rebuked the bejeebies out of this guy. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he has also rejected you from being priests. Please understand we are called to be priests and kings. Amen. Amen. Some people will never fulfill priesthood because they continue to compromise complacent. And I'm going to say another word. 
and not willfully become obedient. See, there's an area where there's willful obedience and forceful obedience. There's two different things. In verse 24, Then Saul said to Samuel, I have sinned. I'm glad you admitted it. For I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord in your words because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. Snap. He feared the people. He was a man pleaser instead of a God pleaser. That's why he was no longer his God. He was Samuel's God. Now, therefore, please pardon my sin. He asked for a pardon. And return with me that I may worship the Lord. But Samuel said to Saul, I will not return with you, for you have rejected the word of the Lord basically enough times now. And the Lord has rejected you from being king over Israel. Again, rebellion, stubbornness, compromise, complacency is rejecting the voice and words of God. You may obey in your own eyes, but not obey in the eyes of God. There is obedience that is willful, which is with ease. And there, there is obedience that is forceful, which people struggle. In other words, you are forcing to be obedient instead of being led by the Spirit to be obedient. There's a difference. We'll talk more about it. I'm going to talk about willful obedience tonight. In 1 Peter chapter 1. That's why the word says the spirit brings life, but the letter brings death. 1 Pete. Chapter 1, verse 6, willful obedience. 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 6, let's speak it. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials, that the what? Genuineness of your faith. Now remember, your faith... It's your connection with him. Because the lack of connection with him is lack of faith. Because he is the substance of everything. That the genuineness of your fellowship, your communication, your connection to the Lord, being much more precious than gold that perishes though it is tested by fire, may be found to the praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ whom having not seen you love. Though now you do not see him, yet believing you rejoice with joy inexpressibly and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your souls. This is genuineness of your faith. In other words, God's checking the genuineness of your obedience. He wants to know if it's truly willful or it's forceful. In other words, out of the level of faith, obedience will be manifested. The level of your faith will also be associated with the level of your obedience. <coughs> faith, again, is your connection and closeness. The genuineness of your obedience because you love him. He wants to know whether you love him. You know, so many people want to obey because they fear going to hell. There's a difference. Man, I need to obey God or I'm going to go to hell. That's a terrible relationship. Amen. Hallelujah. The genuineness of your obedience because you love him, not because you fear his wrath in hell. Amen. When people live in a life in obedience of fear of wrath and hell, 
That's not relationship. That's religion. God is testing whether we're living a life of willful obedience or forceful obedience. 2 Corinthians 8. Second Corinthians 8, verse 1 through 7. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's speak it. Moreover, brethren, we make known to you the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia that in the great trial or affliction, the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded in the riches of their liberty or their freedom. For I bear witness that according to their liberty, yes, and beyond their ability, um, be for their ability, yes, and beyond their ability, they were what? Freely willing, imploring us with much urgency that we would receive the gift and the fellowship of the ministry to the saints. And not only as we had hoped, but they first gave themselves to the Lord and then to us by the will of God. So we urge Titus that as he had begun, so he would also complete this grace in you as well. In other words, obedience from the pure heart is different than obedience from the head. Amen. Obedience from a pure heart is willful obedience. This is an obedience with no desire of return. This is an obedience without recognition. This is an obedience without reward. This is a labor of love unto the Lord, not obedience unto self. It is different. In other words, we are obedient not to receive anything, but to express our love and bless him. In 1 Peter chapter 5. Everybody okay? Hallelujah. First Peter chapter 5 and verse 5. Willful obedience. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. Likewise, you younger people, submit. How many know submission is obedience? Submit yourselves to your elders. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another and be clothed with what? Humility. 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 For God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. Therefore, what? Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. Casting all your care upon him for he cares for you. In other words, submissive with humility is willful obedience humility is willful obedience when there's pride it is a struggle it's forceful obedience see people can be still obedient and be prideful Amen. and they're proud of their obedience And that is disgusting to the Lord. Because that's self-exaltation. And Romans 12. Romans 12. And verses 1 and 2. Let's speak it, please. 
I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your responsibility or reasonable service. That's a daily process. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your thoughts or your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Without willful obedience, you cannot manifest the perfect will of God. It's impossible. Because it takes willful obedience, not forceful obedience. Amen? Go to 1 Peter chapter 1. Hallelujah. 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 22. Look at this, it says, since you have purified your souls in obeying, is that willful obedience or forceful? Willful. Since you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit, in sincere what? Love. Of the brethren. We're going back to this again. Love one another fervently with a what? Pure heart. Having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible through the word of God, which lives and abides forever, because all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of a man is the flower of the grass. And the grass withers, and the flower falls away, but the word of the Lord endures forever. Now this is the word which by the gospel was preached to you. Again, obeying the truth of the word through the Spirit of God in sincere love for your brethren is willful obedience. Strength and power come by willful obedience. Not forced obedience. See, people are trying to be empowered by the Spirit by forced obedience. Again, you can be prideful and still be obedient, but it's only going to last so long. Amen? In James 3. There's something about willful obedience. It's consistent. Consistent. It doesn't waver. It doesn't change. In James chapter 3 and verse 13. In verse 13, let's speak it. Is everybody okay? Everybody there? Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show by good conduct that his works are done in meekness of wisdom. See, works done in meekness of wisdom is willful obedience. When works are done in forceful obedience, there's always a struggle. If you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. This wisdom does not descend from above, but is earthly, sensual, and demonic. For where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and every evil thing are there. But the wisdom that is from above is first what? Pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield or submit or willfully obedient. Without any partiality, no favoritism, and without hypocrisy. Now the fruit of righteousness is shown in peace by those who are peacemakers. Willful obedience aligns with the word and wisdom from above. 
willing to yield his willful obedience to Christ's character as a peacemaker, not an agitator. Amen? Amen. Amen. First Thessalonians 4. First Thessalonians chapter 4, starting at verse 1. Hallelujah, it's good to hear the pages turning on a Tuesday night. <laughs> we turn them fast enough, you can cool your neighbor off. Verse 1. Finally then, brethren, we urge and exhort in the Lord Jesus that you should abound more and more, just as you receive from us how you ought to walk and to please God. For you know what commandments we gave you through the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you should abstain from sexual immorality, that each of you should know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and honor, not in passion of lust, like the Gentiles who do not know God, that no one should take advantage of and defraud his brother in this matter, because the Lord is the avenger of all such, as we also forewarned you and testified. Powerful. For God did not call us to uncleanness, but holiness. Now, can you become considered holy without willful obedience? No. Therefore, he who rejects this does not reject man, but God who has also given us his Holy Spirit. Wow. Very powerful. Willful obedience not only pleases God, but positions us in sanctification in relationship. Now think about this. Enoch was taken because he lived a willful, obedient life by pleasing God. He was taken. And I think a lot of people are going to find out when that day of rapture comes, they're not taken. They're going to be very disappointed. In Matthew 11. <clears throat> Matthew 11, verse Willful obedience always brings a position in place of rest. You're not anxious. You're not worried. You're not fearful. You live a life of trust, rest, and able to wait. In verse 28, he says, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. That's relationship. For I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. <laughs> yoke is easy and burden is light. Learn, it says, learn from his gentle heart. This is willful obedience. Forced obedience is slavery. But we're to be sons and daughters, willing to obey, not needing to obey. Because we have true relationship. <coughs> Willful obedience will put you in a place and sensitivity where you will know God's heart, God's timing, and God's will. To everything. You'll know. Philippians 2.
And what you don't know, you know it's going to work to the good. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 17. Oh, verse 12. Sorry. Philippians 2, 12. Is everybody there? Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and troubling, which is reverence, honor, and respect. That cannot be established on forceful obedience, only on willful obedience. For it is the Lord who works in you both to will and to do his good pleasure. Do all things without what? Complaining and disputing. Why? Because he's letting you know this is a difference. Those who complain and dispute are living a life of forceful obedience. Amen? That you may become blameless and harmless children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you shine as lights in the world, holding fast the word of life so that I may rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in vain or labored in vain. Again, feeling and trembling is what we call the reverence and honor and respect. It's willful obedience. Complaining and disputing is forceful obedience. James chapter 1. You know, you may be around someone that every time they're asked to do something, there's always a resistance. Oh, man. You know, you know they always give you an attitude like, can't you get somebody else to do that? But then they'll do it. That's forceful obedience. What did I say to go James chapter 1? <clears throat> Can you imagine if Jesus showed up and asked you to do something and you said, oh, come on. <laughs> Can't you get somebody else to do it? <laughs> well, people do that and don't even realize it because they're living by a life of physical and only do what they see, not realizing that Christ is there all the time. Hallelujah. James 1, 21. Let's speak it. Therefore lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. But be doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he's an idiot. Uh, he is a, uh, he is like a man observing his natural face in the mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But he who looks into the perfect law of freedom, liberty, and does what? Continues in it, and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. This one will be blessed in what he does. If anyone thinks among you thinks he's religious... And doesn't bridle his tongue, but deceives his own heart. This one's religion is useless. Doer means a manifester of his God's living word in the life that they live because they live a life of willful obedience. Amen? That's why we are sons and daughters. Listen, we are not servants of forceful obedience. We are stewards of willful obedience. Amen? Praise God. I'm going to close at 1 Peter 4. Simple, short teaching. If you didn't get it, you will. <laughs> Oh, 
glory. Verse 7, 1 Peter 4, 7. Let's speak it. But the end of all things is at hand. Therefore be what? Serious and watchful in your prayers. Why? Because God is trying to bring some. See, that when people are willfully obedient, they're seekers. See, they want more. They go every morning to the Lord and wait. Come on, Papa. Let's kick some butt today. Let's go out and rescue some souls, destroy Satan's kingdom. Show me where you want to go. Yes, Holy Ghost bazooka. <laughs> Let's grow for it. But the end of all things is the end of therefore be serious. That means be alert, be consistent, be watchful, but be prayerful. Amen? A person who doesn't pray and seek God cannot be a willful, obedient individual. And above all, things have fervent love for one another. Without God's perfect love, you can't be a willful, obedient individual. If you have to force yourself to love others, then there's a disconnect. And above all things, have fervent love for one another, for the love of God covers a multitude of sins. But be hospitable to one another without grumbling. As each one has received the gift, minister to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If anyone speaks, let him speak as the oracles of God. If anyone ministers, let him do it as with ability with which God supplies that in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom belong the glory and dominion forever and ever and ever and ever. And everybody said? Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. Lord, we repent in any way for forceful obedience. We want to willfully obey you. And use our free will in every area, submitting it to you. Because we love you, we adore you, and we are very grateful. And we live a life to please you and not ourselves. So, Lord, in every area, in any area, we have sought self before you. We repent. Have mercy upon us and let your grace abound. And Holy Spirit, take this over. The word that has been released, let this seed grow and bear fruit for your glory and penetrate every part of our being and members. Holy Spirit, lead us to conviction, lead us to chastening, lead us to correction and direction that we may be protected under your covering and that we may be sons and daughters of willful obedience to the glory of Christ in Jesus' name. And everybody say amen. amen. Praise God. Be blessed and stay dressed with the glory.